Third Story podcast on WBGO. I first met him through his daddy. His daddy is a badass musician, Ben Sidron, and, and we're lucky to have Leo here. So man, come on up here and get this under there. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. My daddy is a baddie. I think that's going to be my new T-shirt I'm going to make. I have the, the fun part of the job. I don't have to talk about numbers. I don't have to ask you to do anything except to make these musicians feel at home in just a second and remind you that the bar is open, but please be respectful if you're going to approach the bar during the concert. Um, there's so much to say about this show, but I think, you know, as uh, we all probably agree, we should probably let them get into it first. But I do just want to say what I think is so wonderful about having spent a few minutes before the show with these musicians is the feeling of how connected two musicians who come from completely different generations, come from different places, are so tied together through this music, and it really gave me a sense of hanging out with two family members or friends. So let's bring them up to the stage. Of course, Houston Person is here already. Give him a round of applause. And Emmett Cohn on the piano.
about these guys. I want to say, I want to be on your level. I want to come down here with you guys. There's so many things to talk about, and yet I don't want to take too much time away from this fantastic music. But we do need to acknowledge the apparently uh, eminent release of uh, imminent release and eminent release of uh, imminent release of these eminent musicians, the Masters Legacy series, Volume Five, Emmett Cohen featuring Houston Person, which I've been told was released today. Why did it come out today? Because the box of CDs arrived at Emmett's house today. And that's all it takes to put out a CD these days. Is you just have to have the copies. But if you have your microphone behind the thing. But I want to just talk about um, this choice of songs. Because one of the things that I read about uh, this album is that this, the process of choosing the material was a very personal discussion between the two of you. How did you decide what you wanted to record? It's not all standard fare, it's a little bit, uh, some more modern, some more classic. We're in love. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry, that's private. <laughs> you don't want to talk to me. <laughs> oh, I really want to talk to you. Oh, oh. well, we, we just, uh, so many beautiful, great songs out there already. Um, we just wanted to uh, elaborate a little on them and, uh, and and really show how beautiful these melodies can be played unadorned. Mm -hmm. And then we mess them up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, he's good at that. I'm not too good at that. Uh, image. I think his eminence. His eminence. Yeah. His eminence. <laughs> and Emmett, what about for you? This is the f the fifth in a series of these records that you've been responsible for making, where you get together with the masters and and bring some young energy into the room. What is this process like for you of going through, you know, so many of your heroes and working with them? Well, they're all so different, I would say. But this is the first time that I've ever felt like we're really friends and you know Houston will call me up at 11 o'clock in the, in the evening and say hey man have you heard this tune it's written by so and so and, and I think you would sound good on it <laughs> and that's friendship right there and, uh, and, and you know I call him up and I'll say hey did, have you read this news story and he said yeah I'm on top of that he watches more news than anybody I know and uh, we, we, we bond over, over not only music, but also life and, and other things like that, and traveling. And um, I think when we're selecting music, we're thinking about a few things. This is what I learned from Mr. Person, is that you want to make people feel good. You want to pe make people want to dance. <laughs> He's laughing in the front row. And, uh, and, and, and you want to you wanna have a party, <laughs> Last, <laughs> lastly. I'm with you. I learned that from you, how to party. Well, my understanding is that this whole year is a kind of birthday party for you because we're celebrating your 88th birthday this year for as long as possible. And it reminded me that's one year for every key on the piano, so it seems auspicious. What? 88 years, 88 keys on the piano. It's a good one to celebrate. Yeah, no comment. That's right. If you say so. I say so. Uh, yeah, why don't you just go ahead and tell them I'm old. That's what you want to say. What I do want to know before we get back to the music is, you, you t <laughs> no, but I'm serious. You know, you told me that you have a gig tomorrow, then you're flying to Atlanta, then you have a couple days, and you're looking forward to going on this cruise where you're going to play. Old, I don't know what old is. I know that when I'm 88, I hope I'm like you. But what I want to know is what, <laughs> what is the secret to this kind of, I mean, you have a lot of energy, and uh, it seems like you still love traveling and playing. Uh, secret, uh, I well, I mind my own business. 
if you mind your own business and stay out of other people's way, I, I just stay in my lane and I enjoy what I do in my lane. I don't try to uh, get in anybody else's lane and I'm doing what I love to do. And I've been doing it now for, oh, we don't want to talk about that. <laughs> but um, those things you do in, in uh, live by certain rules and I try to do something every day to help somebody else. Nice. Maybe give a, <laughs> you know, give, a, give a musician might have a question, a young musician, and I will tell them the truth about this profession, which is a wonderful profession. It's been good to me. And uh, uh, that's what I live by. And in any negative situation, I keep myself out of negative things. Uh, so I just mind my own business. <laughs> uh, you know, that's a good one. Mind your own business. I'll say that, that Mr. Person is also very open and, um, and, and, and receptive. Uh, to everything that goes on around. And if I have an idea, a crazy idea, like walk, come, come walk up five flights of stairs and play a live stream during the pandemic. You know, he said, okay, I'll be there. <laughs> or I say, you know, well, we, got, we got a gig, you know, a couple of gigs across the country and we got to do this and this. And he said, okay, I'll be there. And, and I think that, uh, that, that coming some, from, from such a positive uh, mindset and such an open mindset is, is probably something that, that attracts so many people to, to your music and, and what it is that you do. Well, you take care of me too. He takes care of me. <laughs> I do act like an old man sometimes. Well, I... And, and, and I must say, because my daughters remind me of this, uh, they, they all call me grumpy. So I do fit that <laughs> mold of being a... A grumpy old man. Now we got it all settled. That's we, we sorted that out. Well, I have a crazy idea. Uh, what if you uh, play a few more tunes for us? Yeah. We put a grumpy, a grumpy old tune. Grumpy old, some grumpy old tunes, yeah. Sometimes we read each other's minds, too, after all these gigs together. I said, I was thinking to play this tune. He said, I was thinking to play this tune. And so we were both kind of thinking to play this tune. This is uh, these foolish things. By the way, the last one we played uh, was Richard Rogers called Isn't It Romantic? And before that, we, 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 like, to, um, we like to start our sets with, um, with a piece written by Houston, and that's called Why Not? And uh, the album actually starts with Why Not and, and Isn't It Romantic? Now we'll veer from the record. Okay. Grumpy <laughs> old song.
Houston person, Emmett Cohen. Wow. Can, is it all right if we talk a little, a little more before we wrap this up? Because there's a lot of questions and so little time. We got time. <laughs> got time. How is playing in a duo format different? The record is a quartet. You've played together with a full band. I see there's a lot of playfulness and a lot of room for you to kind of stretch and, and, and have fun when it's in, in a duo. How, how is it different for you to be playing in a duo format? Well, we keep everybody else out of the way. <laughs> it's, it's that simple. Uh, the, 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 the larger the number you have, the more you have to conform, I think. Was that saying intelligently? Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, always. That sounded pretty good. Yeah. Let me say that again. <laughs> what did I say? <laughs> Roll the tape back and oh, see what it says. Yes, kick these. <laughs> oh no, no. It, it's just the more you, the more people you have participating, uh, the more ways you have to go. It so everybody has to watch out for everybody. But it's just the two of us, and we just have fun. And he'll throw an idea at me, and I'll try to develop it. If I don't, I fall by the wayside and give it back to him. Say, give me something else. <laughs> And uh, that's where we have a lot of fun. But we make sure to go keep uh, putting the melody so that they don't forget what we're playing and we, and we don't forget. <laughs> so that, that, that's where the fun comes in, trying to find your way back. <laughs> and Emmett, what about for you? I mean, you have... Uh, I think a lot more space that you can fill up when you're not con contained by your rhythm section. H how does it change for you? Well, it's a totally different approach. Uh, but the main goals are the same, to make music with one another. Uh, it's just in a more intimate setting. And, um, and we're able to be a little more sensitive. And we're also able to take some more risks uh, because it's just us, and like he said, if 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 there isn't if there isn't four people trying to hit the same thing at the same time, it's only it's only two. Uh, it's a little more of a of a of, of a of a dance where you don't have to necessarily be so overt. You know, there's more subtleties in the duo, and uh, you know, you're never gonna get covered up by a drummer. <laughs> and you never and you never have to worry about covering up the bass player. <laughs> you know. Because the bass player is the softest and the drummer is the loudest, so you know now we can we we can explore all those frequencies, you know, quiet and loud and and, uh, and everywhere in between. And this is actually the first time we've we've played in this duo format, I think. Uh, well, we we have played in a duo format, even though we have the rest of the guys up. <laughs> I couldn't have said it better yeah, that's myself. That's beautiful. You know? <laughs> I, this is a little bit of a, 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 a diversion and a deep place to go, Emmett, but we've been having this conversation over the course of a series of podcast episodes on the third story, part of WBGO Studios, and you can find those in the archive. And, um, but we have been talking about um, how, on the one hand, you are such a modern guy. I mean, you joke that you take Bitcoin, but I don't think it's a joke. I think you will accept Bitcoin, yeah. You're, you are fully a 21st century, totally digital citizen. Obviously, we all know the story of your live stream show, and you, know, you are not afraid of technology and, and new modes of communication. We were, the three of us, here looking at your TikTok account before the uh, show started, and at Tell them what we, what we were looking at. Well, uh, as I understand it, you've been taking some sly videos. No, he knows that uh, he okay. knows they're being taken. Yeah, you've been taking some videos of Mr. Person and posting them on your uh, accounts, and some of them have received hundreds of thousands of views, which is a gift because it brings you know, your wisdom and humor and sensibility to a younger generation. 
There's no question out there that I'm just saying that. <laughs> but what do you think of that? You're hanging out with this, you know, this 21st century guy. He's putting you on the internet so that these kids can, can watch you on their phones. Well, I say what I have to say. I like him. I think he's wonderful. Yeah. I hate him. <laughs> he's, my, he's my guy. He's my guy. But I, I guess the thing that's so interesting to me about your approach, Emmett, is that you are both so modern and yet so in touch with the tradition when you play. And I think that's what's very striking to me about this. This is a very... This is, this is a, a show that is so rooted in the language and the tradition and the vocabulary and, and draws from so many of the masters. You have a series called the Masters Legacy Series, and yet you're also an example of what it is to be a contemporary artist today. And I don't have a question. I just want to commend you for that because I'm, I'm, so, I'm so excited about what you're doing. Thanks. I, I, I will say that um, I've learned through studying the music that the farther in the past you forge, the further in the future you'll be able to see and, and, and experience. And, and it works equally both ways. And I will also say that modern is an interesting term that we toss around a lot. Uh, but when you think about, you know, I'm a pianist, so I think about Thelonious Monk or Duke Ellington or, or, or Art Tatum or, you know, Fats Waller. Like, no one's really more modern than those guys, you know? Like when you, when, you, when you play and experience art in the moment, it can affect people who are alive in that time um, in the way that it's going to affect them. And, um, and it's the same with other art. If you go to the museum and you, you, know, you look at Picasso, you don't say like, ah, oh, it's some old stuff. No, it's like forever modern. And, and when I play with, with, um, with master musicians, they are forever modern. When I play with Houston, what I hear coming out of the horn is the most modern thing you could possibly imagine. It's here and it's now and it's making people feel th real things in the moment. It makes me feel real things and then we're able to, you know, to meet in that, in, in that place of feeling and not of thinking and naming and all that. Response? I agree with everything he says. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Just the way you are. Yeah, to, to bring it full circle, um, yeah. I think one of the most interesting pieces of music, you know, Houston pr is, is a producer as well as a saxophone player, and that comes through in his playing. Uh, when we're on stage, you know, he'll always at the right time say, bridge, or he'll always at the right time say, you got it, or drum solo, and, and it's like it's always perfect, perfectly timed for what the music needs, you know, never, never... Uh, from from like a place of like what do I need right now? But well, always what does the music need? And it uh, expands also to the repertoire. You know, he said what what should what should we play and 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 express ourselves on? And so one of the things that he brought to me was hey, how about this Billy Joel tune called just the just the way you are? And I said well I've heard it but I I never really checked out the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> then I went to check out the bridge and I said. All of a sudden, Billy Joel says, I said, whoa, Houston's on, Houston's on the next level. That's the mic and the hand technique. <laughs> if you practice with a microphone or a pencil in your hand, then when you take it out, you're able to do more things that you didn't think you knew how to do. Um, anyway, he showed me that, and, and we you know, go over the tunes like that, and we think about the harmony, and we talk about the rhythm, and, and Houston's always got the best tempos, too. <laughs> Can you tell him how you find those tempos? How you put it on the spot? <laughs> okay. Where'd you, where'd you find those tempos? I accept the challenge. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Uh... Okay, we we think it's Savoy, Savoy, not the song. Okay, ah 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 ah, I did that, did 
You got it? Okay. One, two, one, two, three, four. You playing? Yeah. All right. <laughs> this is the last tune, Savoy Tempo. I love you just the way you are, Emmett Cohn, Houston right. person.
assistant person, Emmett Cohen.